All right, Coach, uh, you guys came away with a win over Toledo in the second round, then ultimately your season ended with a loss to NIU. Can you just give us an overall kind of briefing on the performance of the MAC tournament and kind of what the difference was there in that last match for you guys? Well, level of opponent was, was a big difference there. Um, and that's not taking anything away from Toledo. Toledo's a good team that beat us during regular season, and we played very well in the quarterfinals against them. Uh, I was really impressed with a number of our kids uh, just the way they, um, just the way they performed that night, and um, it was a good, good win for us. A couple of close sets, one dominant set, and then go to the semifinal. Um, you know, a combination of two things. I think NIU played played well and played well on their home court, and I think there were a number of our players that didn't handle the moment well as far as the environment, and ultimately that's my fault for not having them where they need to be in in that type of environment. It's a challenging place to play, challenging environment to be in. Um, it was a number of young kids first time in, in that type of a moment while being on the court. And I, I guess I had hoped that we had enough players that had, that had won the whole thing that would be enough to balance that out. And, and I, don't, I don't know that it was in that situation. And, and NIU played really well. I mean, give them credit. And they played really well against us. And then the next night they, they swept Miami as well with fairly similar scores. Um, did you feel like the the atmosphere, the venue, NIU having the home court advantage, did that play a factor into into what went on on Saturday? I think it, it certainly does. In the same way that a year ago we had that we had that here, and and I'm sure it it helped us and hurt our opponents in the same way that this weekend it helped NIU. And that's um, that's not an excuse. That's just home court advantage. That's why that phrase is is out there. Um, but that's why it's so important to go and win regular season. So you have that opportunity. And so that's, I think, a great reminder for our kids just how important that is to go and be successful in the regular season so you earn the right to host. Um, but I would say it's not, it's not just that. It was, a, it was a very good NIU team that was playing well. And, and maybe we weren't um, as prepared emotionally for that moment as maybe I would have liked. Without prying too far into sure. it, but what was your message to the team after the match, season's over? What, what did you kind of talk to them about after, after the season ended? The last, you know, your last time in a locker room together is different than, than every other time, of course, because you're usually in season, you're talking about what went wrong so that you can make it better for the, for the next time. In this one, there's really, doesn't make a lot of sense to spend time on that because there is there is no tomorrow for for this season you know you have time after the season to go back and look at things and plan for next year and change your system and change personnel and all that uh, but that's not the time at the time it, when you're when you're there after a loss junior year it is really a time to honor your seniors and and that was what the majority of our time was in there um, talking about them talking about their their contributions uh, and even talking about the season as a whole it, it was and I'm sure we'll be, I mean, there'll be some more questions about that, but it, it was, uh, there were certainly some high moments and low moments. There were in some ways a great deal of overachievement that happened this year, in some ways a lot of disappointment that happened this year. This year. And so it was, it, it was good to maybe bring to mind some of those situations this year, some of the things that they have come through. And one thing I do every year, when, when I grade, when I look back and grade a season, it rarely has to do with the championship, regular season, or a tournament. For me, it's all about, you know, and this is hard to, to judge, I guess, but for me, it's all about what percentage of our potential did we reach. And I, I've had years that we went to the NCAA tournament, I didn't really think we were that close to our potential. And, and I've had years that we didn't go that I thought we were really close to as good as we could be with the person that we had that year. And, and, and I think this year they really, um, but they did a good job, and there, there are a number of things that I can look back and see that, you know, we, we started at one level, ended at a very different level, and just grew tremendously throughout the year. And that's something, again, I give, I give Mal and Brooke a great deal of credit for their leadership through this year. It's a tough year in a lot of ways for them, um, but uh, they, they led uh, all the way through and definitely very proud of them. With how special this senior class was to you and to, the, to their teammates, Obviously, your season ending's difficult enough, but right. to deal with losing them after that match on top of that, how, how tough was it in the locker room afterward? It was tough. You know, it's, um, 
you, you don't always know what you're going to say in that moment. I think a lot of times in locker rooms you have an idea before you go in, but you, you give the players a few minutes and, and then you go in and, and I sat down on a cooler or whatever my, my seat was for, for the evening and, and just realized it wasn't time to talk. And so I just went up and gave them both a hug, thought I was proud of them, you know, and, and then we talked for a few minutes and then I um, ch chose to just leave, leave the locker room and, and have all the coaches leave and, and let the players have some more time with them and, and then asked our, our seniors, maybe one final act of leadership while still in season mode is to kind of leave a final charge to the team and they'll continue leading. I mean, there'll be a banquet where we'll have a chance to honor them, but I think it's just really important that you, you try to find closure and bring closure to a season in a way that, that's truly honoring to those kids and, and they deserve it. And they've been great, great players in our program, but more importantly, great ambassadors in our program, great student athletes and there's just, those are just never fun moments. I mean, that's just, that's how it is. Um, but I, but I hope, I hope they know and we'll keep telling them if they don't know just how, how proud of them that we are and how much we've loved having them in our program. It's kind of a multifaceted question, but going back to how you grade your season, yeah. as of today, how would you grade your season? And what did the team improve upon from day one up until yeah. the final day? And finally, what, what will you guys need to improve on to take, take the next step next year? Yeah. Good, good use of multifaceted, first of all. Um, I, I can multitask, so we're good. Um, you know, I think in terms of grading, grading our team versus our potential, I'd actually grade our team pretty high this year. We, along with Toledo, were the only teams at the tournament that did not have a returning all-conference player when we started the year. And, and certainly we were only the only team in the top five that did not have a returning all-conference player yet finished third. And so I'm proud, proud of our team for that. Um, same time, third place in the Ohio Volleyball program. That's the lowest we've been since, I believe, 2010. And so it's, it's disappointing in, in some ways. Um, you know, we were, before the year, we were picked fifth and finished third in regular season, finished third in the tournament, so we overachieved, so that's great. But on the other side, we lost in the semifinals the year after we won it, so that's frustrating. And, and so it's just kind of, a, kind of a back and forth. You know, I think back to, to non-conference. You know, we started the year not so great, and not just the overall record, but we, we couldn't win the close games. And there were so many sets, we were up late in the set, and then we would lose. And it just seemed to happen pretty regularly. And, and during non-conference, we were five and six in two-point sets. So anytime we were in a close match, we won just less than half of them. And then once we got into conference play, we were 12 and six in sets that were decided by two points for the rest of the year. And, and so it, I was just really proud of our team for growing and I guess having a sense of calm in those moments. You know, I kind of, every year you have to learn your team over again because every year it's different. Every year, I mean, there's a, Coach K is one of my favorite, favorite coaches and he had a book, you know, Season is a Lifetime, I think it's what it's called. And, and it really is. I mean, every year you, you start again and you don't really know who you're gonna, what your personality is going to be. And, and I learned at some point during this year that, that I needed to be very calm for this team because this team has a lot of emotions and they have a tendency to go way high and way low. And so a lot of my job this year was to stay pretty close to the center, pull them down a little, pick them up a little, but try not to do too much emotionally. And there were things that, there were a few things that tipped us off, you know, on that we, we learned that, that our team, like our team didn't respond well at all when there were bad calls this year. And that's part of just a really emotional team. And, and it got exponentially worse if I got up and really argued the call then our, our team tended to not respond well. And so there were a lot of just kind of interesting things that you figure out throughout the year, but to go from five and six and two point sets and non-conference to 12 and six, that's a pretty radical change. And to be able to come from behind a number of times, uh, really, really proud of our group for that. I think the other thing I would say I was pleased with this year is offensively we weren't great, but we were within two one thousandths 
uh, of hitting percentage what we were a year ago, despite graduating starting setter, bro, I mean, uh, two starting middle, I mean, all those things to be graduated, our offense was right there. So proud of that. Our defense was really bad this year. There's no way to sugarcoat that. It was really bad. And it, it, it was probably the worst defense we've had around here in, in a while, I mean, probably 10 years. One year after last year having the best, hist best defense in the history of our program. And so it's really frustrating to have that kind of a, kind of a flip in one year. So I think that that's kind of segues into what we need to improve on defense mm -hmm. tremendously. And that's something that we struggled all year. We struggled blocking, we struggled in the back row, uh, just not at the level that, that we needed. I think that starts with the serve. We weren't, we didn't get as much out of our serve this year as we have the last couple of years. Um, some of it being, being personnel based, um, just when you, when you, and I said this to start the year, um, and I hate to keep bringing it up, but when you lose a tremendous amount of speed at setter, then your ability to run down digs is gonna change. And that's not so much a knock uh, on anyone we have in our program now, it's just when you lose an elite athlete with elite speed, then it, then it changes. And I mean, I go back and obviously look at a lot of numbers and our, our dig percentage was lower this year than it was the previous four years when there was a great deal of speed, et cetera. And it's not much off from what it was right before that, um, but that's just something that I think we, we have to really look at and really adjust. Some of that is kids just growing up, learning what to do. Uh, it got better as the year went on, but I still needs to make, some, make big strides as we go into next year. Um, so I think that's probably, if I had to say, the one area that we're gonna really focus on in the off season is that, and then being more balanced. I mean, it's something that we talked about all year, but I mean, you look at the stats from the final game, we barely set our middles at all. Uh, we overset our outsides, and there just comes a point that it gets really easy to defend if you know there's only three people that could attack the ball, and then when one of those players rotates out, there's only two people that can attack the ball. That's a pretty simple offense to stop. And so although we, we hit for an okay number this year, uh, that needs to get better. And I think once we do that, I think that will even start to help our defense because it puts our opponents in harder transition situations instead of getting the same ball from the same location. What's kind of the next step for you guys now that the season's over? What will you be kind of focusing on these next couple months before spring season starts up? Well, today we, uh, we will have a team meeting and we will also do some physical testing. That's what we always do the Monday whenever, uh, whenever we're done. Um, we just have to, depending on the year, when you're allowed to do that for compliance reasons. But uh, today we'll be doing that and just we, we always we want to see where we are now compared to where we were in August. We want to have some real data for when we start the spring. We can go into our physical training. I think our physical training has gone really well the last couple of years. Our kids have really bought into that and are making some, some changes. I think it's really good. Um, and then beyond that, we'll just have a very brief meeting today and, and talk through just more logistics, just what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks and set up some end of your individual meetings and all that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll start talking leadership immediately with the, with the kids, with the older kids that, that are left on the team right now because there's, there's never a time that, that a team doesn't need leadership. And so we'll immediately today, we'll have our first leadership meeting and start talking about that because it's, it's never too early to start thinking about next year. Now there's, you need to have a time that you don't need to be thinking, I gotta do stuff today. These kids need a break. And they've been traveling, we've been on a bus a lot, and we're worn out right now. There are kids that you need to heal and from any injuries that you have during season. A lot of kids have nagging stuff, that's normal for this time of year. And even emotionally, I think it's important that our kids, that our kids get away, you know, just get away for a while and just get away from the game. And, but even in getting away, I think it's good to at least have that little spark of, hey, when we come back, here's a couple of ideas. And just putting a couple of those things out in front of our kids today. Um, and then as far as once we get started, you know, we will get going in, in January and start individual training. We do have, as we know, a very young team. So that individual training is a very important component this year. And I really believe that as individual players improve, the collective play goes way up. And particularly on defense, I mean, I think you, you look at the last, I guess about half the season, we had someone playing middle who hadn't played middle since she was a sophomore in high school, and yet she found some way to lead our team in blocks. And I'm just amazed by what could be 
with her. <laughs> we haven't, we've never trained her to be a middle until the day she started being a middle. <laughs> and we don't know which way we're gonna go with Simone. We don't know if she's gonna be an outsider, she's gonna be a middle, but if she is a middle and she gets to train all spring, whoa, I mean, that's gonna be pretty serious, what she can do. And, and there are a number of kids like that that, um, that I think we, we have more time individually with them. They'll, they'll make some strides that they need to make. Um, add that to uh, the recruits that we have coming in, and I think there's, there's defensive help that, that's on the way, and, and that's something that we'll not only address as in the group that we have right now, but I think even looking forward to next preseason, that has to be a major focus of what we do. My last question for you is, uh, who, do you, who do you kind of anticipate filling in that leadership void? You're gonna have two seniors, much like this year, again, again right. next year. Who, who, do you, who are you kind of looking at saying it's your time to step up and lead? Yeah, I think there's, there's a part of who you think, and then there's a part of let's wait and see. And I have a pretty good idea this year, I think more than, than a lot of years, um, because you, you, want, you want someone who, to lead who really wants to lead. You know, you don't want to shove someone in there who's like, I really don't want this job. Every once in a while you can get away with that, but, but more often than not you want somebody who really wants to lead but also that the team will choose to follow. Sometimes you have someone that's like, I want to lead, I want to lead, and the team's like, no, not her. And, and so we have to wait and see a little bit, but I, I certainly believe the, we have three kids in our program that are entering their fourth or fifth year, including Katie in, in that group, that I believe are in good positions to do that, and we'll just wait and see how that, how that group goes forward. You guys have anything? Um, Coach, obviously the season just ended and it's hard to evaluate everything, but have you thought about at all what, what these two seniors have meant to the program and what their lasting impact will be? Think about it all the time and what those seniors have meant to our program. And of course, senior night wasn't very long ago and we had the opportunity to honor them then, but we, we need to continue honoring them. I'm looking forward to the banquet in January to do that and I'm looking forward to keeping in contact with them. I'm looking forward to our team continuing to honor them by doing the things that they did well. And you, you take Brooke as the, the first academic captain that we've had here and how she helped people around her academically. You take Mal, uh, the thing that just jumps out is what she did in the weight room and how she changed herself physically and, and how she is truly elite as an athlete. And, and that's one of the messages that I even shared with the team in the locker room the other night is when a lot of our freshmen come, they see Mal and they're like, this kid's insane. You know, and not only can we not see ourselves doing that, we're not even sure we want to because it's so far away from what they view as work ethic. And what I try to get across to, to our team is when what Mal does becomes somewhere approaching normal for our team, the sky's the limit. It's just, it's unbelievable. And, and while I don't believe that every kid on our team will get to that level, that's what those two kids leave is the legacy of what they did right. And, and it's not to say that Brooke didn't work hard in the weight room, it's not to say that Mal didn't do a good job in the classroom, to be clear. Um, they really, they, they both espouse what it, what it means to be a student athlete. And, and they lived that on a daily basis, didn't complain, just went and worked, and, and I love that about them, and I continue to love that about them. And so I think for our team, um, that that's the best way we honor them is learning from them and acting accordingly. And then, I don't know how this question will sound, uh, but there's so many surprises throughout the season. So Mal stepping up, and Erica and Simone, and Katie had that one night where she had like career high and kill. So what do you have to do as a coach to have more of those surprises come next season? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm looking for more surprises. I, I well, more good surprises. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. It, it's um, you know, I think it's just you have to have a, a willingness to to change, and we. I mean, some, I just keep using Simone because that that was the biggest positive surprise because it was so unexpected. I mean, it, we knew we were going to be thin in the middle to start the year, and. It's one of those kind of frustrating things, kind of like, kind of like Katie was a year ago. I mean, Katie's, Katie's playing and doing pretty well, but we're struggling ball control. And so Mal goes outside, Shelby comes back to the middle, and, and Katie's the one left out. 
She's on the bench last year for the last third of the year. And then this year, Sarah's playing really well. And she's like starting to really come into her own. And she just had a match that we're like, oh, this is great. A freshman's really growing up. This is wonderful. And then there's an illness and she's out for five weeks. Certainly not anything that she planned. Didn't do anything wrong, just happened. But so her, her season radically changes. She goes from really taking off to not being able to play a lot for the rest of the year. And, and so sometimes the, the really positive surprises come out of really negative situations. And, and that could have been a real negative for our team. And, and we, we tried several different options in there. Different players went in to play middle that had more recently played middle than Simone. And, and then we, you know, we just we want to try Simone and see what that looks like. And at the beginning, it, it was, of course, a challenge, as you would expect. But then over time, she learned and she learned and she learned. And that's one of the things that I was so impressed with her, just she kept learning. I mean, right up until the, the last practice before our last match, she's still learning. I mean, she's still improving with, with literally, at that point, hours left in our season. And, and so that to me is a really positive surprise. I would, rather, I would rather find those surprises in our own gym ahead of time and, and then kind of have it more, hey, we're gonna plan to release these things because we found something great and not have to find it because, well, we're, we're really hurt, you know, or whatever that causes that, that shortage at a position. But regardless of how you find it, I, I think it's important that you you're willing to, as a staff and as a team, even emotionally, to be able to look at a situation and say, okay, this, this isn't what we planned, but here's this, this idea, and let's try it. And if it doesn't work, that's okay, that's all my fault. And if it does work, then we all look really good right now. And so I think that's, that's something I hope we continue. I hope our team keeps that mentality of kind of, I know it's cliche, but next man up, kind of a mentality that if something happens, well, we're just gonna keep plugging away, keep trying different things and I think that was one that was a, a, a big surprise. I think Mal turning around her season, I can't call it a surprise because it's Mal, but I will say it was an impressive feat to go from Libro to five matches in a row of 22. That's something I'm gonna remember for a long time. And, and certainly just a great experience for her. But uh, as a team, I, I'm, not, I'm not wishing for more surprises next year, I'm really not. Uh, I'm just wishing for, um, a team that, that works hard and a team that is, has an open mind to change when we need to change has, and has the great, the great sense of culture and family that this team had. And I, I wouldn't call that a surprise because we all, coaches, players, everyone, we all work to create that culture and, and build that family environment. But it was at an all-time high this year. And it was truly a joy to be around a group that loved each other at this level, that just couldn't, couldn't, they just wanted to spend more and more time with each other all the time. And it was just, it was a joy to come to work, to be with them in the gym every day. And that's one of the things that, when you have a group like that, it's the hardest thing, is that, I'm gonna see them in the gym today, except for Brooke and Mal, of course, we don't make our seniors do any testing, but see the rest of them and that's great. But then after today, I won't see them in the gym for a long time, and that stinks. You know, you, you just get so used to that rhythm and, and you, it's, it's a crazy rhythm and it's stressful and it's all those things, but it's also a great, it's just a great time together. And so I'll definitely miss that with the entire group. You guys kind of talked about Allie and how you expected big things from her. Can you yeah. just talk about her year and how she growed into like one of the most efficient players in the MAC this year? Right. I, I, that's... Another impressive feat, but not a surprise. And something I've talked about before the year started, I believe uh, that she could do that. And at the end of the year, she's the kid that's on the, the all-conference tournament team. And there are only six kids in the conference that were on that team. And I don't remember exactly, but I'm, I glanced at it once, but I think all of them were seniors except for um, Allie and then one other player. And, and so that gives you an idea, idea of maybe where she could be next year in the conference. And my belief in her is sky high. And it's for her like it is for all of our returners. It's about what do we do between now and next August? You know, we're gonna take a break and everybody gets some rest. But then when we get back after it in January, what are we gonna do? And are we gonna go and, and go for something really, really special? Or are we content to be one of the best players in the MAC 
that's that's good, but but not maybe the absolute best. And, and I think that kid's potential is really really high, and looking forward to seeing her achieve that next year. Um, and then with Simone, you talked about her. I'm just curious, like. Is, is that something you have to decide kind of soon because the training's so different from outside the middle or can you kind of play it by ear for a while? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. And that's something that we'll have to, we're going to go into the, the spring having an open mind with that and asking her to have an open mind with that because she, I think the difference in middle outside for her, her she has to have a lot more arm speed. She has to have a lot more strength in her shoulder to be a really effective outside. Because when you get an out-of-system ball, you have to be able to hit the ball with pace. And you don't necessarily have to win the point on that out-of-system swing, but you have to be able to, if you're out-of-system, hit a ball that puts them out-of-system. You can't just spin a ball in that puts them back in system, you're probably going to lose the point. And, and that's where I think if she were playing outside right now, she would struggle um, on the out-of-system balls. Middle, her, her lateral speed is impressive truly impressive, and, and that's something that, that goes very well to being a middle, more so even than being an outside. Um, she, she's a very quick jumper, which is great as a middle, even more important than it is as an outside. So I think she right now, the physical attributes would say middle, but if she gets stronger with her shoulder, then she could be a pretty impressive outside and an incredible blocking outside. She could be a blocker as an outside that Shelby was a year ago when she was playing outside for us. That, People you know, would want to run slides and you can just let, let her stay one-on-one -on -one and really feel like you would still have a, maybe not an advantage, but close to an advantage over there. And so we're really going to go in and look at both and just kind of see where, see where it goes. We're going to ask her to keep an open mind, like I said, and we're going to do the same. Um, and then my last one of the season just kind of ended, but um, Stephanie kind of emerged as the setter, but Caitlin still played in 15 matches. Um, do you think one of them emerged as like the setter of the future because they're both still pretty young or are they going to battle it out again? I think anytime you have two young kids, I mean, it's, it's an ongoing competition. And I think they are two very different players. And I think that's why we saw many times this year Steph playing front row and, and then having Caitlin playing in the back row. And so they, they have very different strengths. And, and you, as a coach, you always want to like merge people's strengths, but you can't do that. And, and so it'll be interesting to see how that goes in, in the spring. And uh, I certainly wouldn't say that it's a, it's a done deal. I mean, clearly Steph was our starter for this year. And, and I think she, she grew quite a bit throughout this year, improved um, considerably from start to finish. Um, but I would never, eight months ahead of the season, say, you're not eight months, I guess 10 months ahead of the season, uh, I would not say this is what we're gonna do next year. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen between now and then. Uh, well, like, I guess the phrase today has been open mind, but I guess it goes back to that one more time. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens. We'll, we'll train both of them in the spring. Um, hope that both of them work really hard and then see where that takes us.